had a plan, you're able to execute it, and you did this, you did this with boom, field goal. Chelsea and Anatello had a clean ride, but will it be enough? Meanwhile, back in the warm-up ring, Andre's riders are almost up. For Natalie, not only is this the last day of her junior career, it's also right one of the most right difficult up. courses That's she's ever right seen. Up. That's the one. I have no problem admitting that I'm a little terrified right now. <laughs> Stay down and don't look desperate. Then soft and not too fast. Don't lose your way. The morning of the McClay, I was pretty nervous because it was my last final and it's kind of been built up for a long time and it was really important to me. And I was just kind of trying all morning not to think about it. Natalie and Chagall get off to a good start, handling the tight turns and angled fences with ease. But then they knock a rail down. It's up to the judges to decide if that will count against them. Now it's Natalie's teammate Maggie's turn. This course looks simple, but it's hard. You think, oh, it's a piece of cake. But then you try to execute it, it's hard. It's very technical. You have to show off your abilities to handle it. Under all that pink. Maggie had a rough season when her mom became ill. But now that Susan has a clean bill of health, Maggie can stay focused on the task at hand. She and Peter Pan keep a smooth and controlled pace. It was a clean ride, until the end. Like her teammate Natalie, Maggie has a rail down. Each time a rail comes down, the judges have to decide, did the horse not jump high enough, or did the rider give bad direction? If they determine it's the rider's fault, that could mean the end of the McClay. For Maggie and Natalie, getting to the next round is far from certain. The first round of the McClay Championship Finals is still underway, and the course continues to pummel the riders. Few are left unscathed. Now, whoa, whoa. It's been a long morning, and Frank still has three riders to go, including the favorites Brian and her horse Logan. But first, Marie is about to put her new horse, Diamond Rock, to the test. Easy work with this horse a little bit this morning and said it felt real good to her. And Maria got a good night's sleep because we kidnapped her last night. She stayed in our room. Make sure she got here on time. So she should have a clear head this morning. Diamond Rock knows how to jump high fences, but he's new to the precision of equitation. It soon becomes obvious that he needs more work. They jump beautifully high, but when the horses jump high, they don't cover as much distance across. So the course just started to unravel for Maria. It can be really difficult when you don't know your horse. You can ride a horse in the practice ring and then get in the show ring and have a completely different horse on your hands. It wasn't the ride they planned, and now the McClay may be over for Maria. I'll tell you one thing, you rode way better than your horse went. I think if we'd had, you know, just one horse show under our belt with a horse, we would have had a really good shot. The way you were Boy, you try, you just don't understand. While Diamond Rock is an equitation rookie, Nico's horse 007 is a proven champ. He won the McClay three years ago and seems ready for the ride ahead. I think Nico's looking very good. Just had a fantastic warm up with 007. I feel good. I'm so exhausted that it, I, I'm beyond being nervous. But horses are unpredictable, and you never know what will happen. Open, jump I think if Nico relaxes and rides well, we're going to have a good day. It's the end of the road, and we're hoping we're going to follow it through. Nico and 007 get off to a great start. But then, 007 proves that horses can always surprise you. 
and we just came to the end of the road. 007 refused to jump a fence, and to make matters worse, he knocks a rail down. There's absolutely no chance to be on the standby. We're, we're finished. We're done. It's a heartbreaking blow for Nico and his family. The horse spooked a little bit and just didn't give him much extra to go with, and he chose to not jump the jump, which was really a shame. Started out beautiful. After 007 ducked out on me, it sort of ended what I'd worked for the whole year, but now I have next year, so I'll just come back and try it again. But for now, the season has come to an abrupt end. Are you crying? What are you crying about? I'm, I'm, I don't know, because I'm overtired, and I feel bad for these kids. You know, that kid just walked by, and, you know, she's in the same boat as us, so. Well, it's not going to help. Yeah, it's what happens when you stay up to many hours in a row. As exhaustion sets in, their disappointment is tempered by the fact that they can finally go home. Overall, Nico has had an excellent season, and he has no regrets. Working with uh, 007 and Rocket this year was fantastic. They're both great horses. We had terrific results, and I'm disappointed that I didn't do well at McClay Finals this year. But that's the way horse shows go. You win some, you lose some, and I lost. I think Double O just said it all. He wants to go home. Finally, the favorites are up. You get him out in one. Brian and Logan must have a clean ride, or they won't advance to the next round. Their shot at history is on the line. No one's ever won all four finals. So if I did win McClay, I would be the first one to do so. It'd be like completing the puzzle, I guess. It'd be amazing, but it's gonna be really difficult. The round looks clean, but then the unthinkable happens. Logan knocks a rail down, which could be the mistake that knocks them out of contention. Discussing this all week about how hard it is to win these and how hard it would be to win the McClay after everything else, Brent. That rail right there, that might haunt us the rest of the day. That one rail might keep, keep you out of the record books. So have Brian and Logan just lost the McClay? Everyone's on edge waiting for the results. Only 30 riders will be called back to compete in the next round. When the list is posted, Maggie, Natalie, and Brian all made it through. 99. Maggie and Peter Pan are in 23rd place. Natalie and Chagall are 18th. And Brian and Logan are fourth. Despite each having a rail down, the judges liked how they handled their horses. 12, Meanwhile, there's bad news. 12, Nico, Maria, and Chelsea didn't make the cut. Julie Wells. Wait a second. I went two. first. Kate is next. I had a pretty good round. My horse is good. I'm not on the standby, which is fine. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting anything, like I said, so it was fine. She's just, just had a great Syracuse, and that's what's important, because a lot of people didn't. So for her to have a good trip and feel good about it, that's, that's big. You know, some of these kids have been here a few years, and maybe it's their, their time. Chelsea will have her time. These girls will have their time. the McClay Championship Finals, the show goes on, and it's down to the top 30 riders. In the second of three rounds, they perform in what's known as the flat phase. Here, the riders walk, trot, and canter around the ring, while the judges review each rider's position. It seems pretty basic, but guess again. The flat, the kids are trying to take it up another notch. They're really concentrated on very, very, very small details that to the uneducated eye probably wouldn't even be viewable. 
squat thing is only mentally hard in the sense that you have to keep going through your checklist in your head, like, are my heels down, are my legs still, are my hands up, is my back tight, am I looking at the ground? It's more work than it looks like. Way more work. By the end, your legs are burning. Yeah. It's hard. <laughs> The flat counts for 50%, and only about half of the 30 riders will make it through to the final round. 1262, 1299. Finally, the results are in. They are taking 17 back. Julie Wells is on top. Casey McCann is in second. Josephine Nash is third. Brian's fifth. While Brian dropped from fourth to fifth place in the standings, Maggie has had an incredible rise. Told you they like Maggie. And for a minute, she trotted in. She moved up. 13 spots. We're clawing our way back. Yeah, I moved up from 23rd to 10th on the flat. That was our weakest part. The McClay has reached the home stretch, and it's now down to the final round. Out of 150 riders who competed, only 17 remain. They'll jump one last course. Then, the judges will pick the winner. For the last team standing, a year's worth of hard work is about to come down to just one ride. This is going to be a completely new course. And as you saw in the first round, anything can happen. We can have rails, we can have bobbles. There's really a lot of room for movement, I think, in the final. So far, the day has gone well for Heritage Farm. Four of Andre's riders made it to the final round, including Maggie and Natalie. Right, now we need to get four out of the ten available ribbons. Yes. That's the next goal. First half of the day, mission accomplished. Meanwhile, it's been a tough day for Beacon Hill. Frank started the day with 10 riders, but now has only two left. Brian and her best friend Sloan, who's another top contender. I mean, now that the course is set like this, you're in a great spot, because we got nothing to lose. Because we only came here for one ribbon, right? Four, oh, okay? Yeah. Go for the gold. <laughs> we're going one, do. two today, girls, one, two. With a slip to fifth place, Brian shot at history now depends on one ride. If she and Logan nail this round and win the McClay, she'll secure her fourth and final junior equitation championship. In first place is Julie Wells, another top-ranked rider who's won several big shows this year. She's had the lead all day and is always tough to beat. But first, Andre's riders are up. In her last ride as a junior, Natalie hopes she and Chagall can move from 11th place into the top 10. Maggie and Peter Pan have nothing to lose. They've come all the way from 23rd to 10th place overall. But two other Heritage riders, Addison and Jessica, have also come on strong, giving the rest of the field a run for their money. We feel great right now. It's really exciting. It's been a, a long year. They've all worked really hard. Any one of them has a shot at maybe winning this championship and definitely getting ribbons. And it would be awesome if all the girls ended up in the top 10. In the warm-up ring, Frank keeps an eye on the competition. Brian and Logan are almost up. Yep, yep, yep. Let's go, babe. Look in your rear view mirror, buddy. We're coming at you. Finally, it's the moment of truth. Brian and Logan will need the ride of their lives. I knew if I wanted to win the McClay, I was going to have to take a ton of chances and really just lay it on the line. I remember that the judges said that the rider that was going to win was going to have to do something different. So I just decided that I was going to take all the sharp returns and try and leave out as many strides as possible everywhere. Whoa. Brian and Logan don't hold back. Their aggressive ride signals to the judges that they want to win. They have a clean and decisive round, but is it enough? That's turning it up. Now they gotta catch us. Julie Wells is on top of her game. She's the last rider of the day. If she can put in another perfect round, she'll clinch the win. She has another solid round with no obvious mistakes, but it isn't a standout. 
whether or not it affects the final results is now in the judge's hands. We're ready to go. It's been a long day. Now 10 of 6. We started at 6, 1 o'clock in the morning, actually. We're ready for it to be over. They're making us sweat a little bit. Trainers of the top 10. At last, the final results are in. The top 10 riders are called into the ring for the awards presentation. While Maggie and Brian head in, Natalie gets left behind. I'm proud of you all. There should be no tears. No, she wants no, to go I'm again. No, I'm sad because she wants Over. to go again next year. Not we had such a wonderful one. <laughs> now, her junior riding career is officially over. This is what I've been doing since I was eight. And um, I'm so sad. <laughs> she must also bid farewell to her partner, Chagall, who's been sold to another rider at Heritage. You and I trying to be the best we can. Maybe I can sleep for once, that'll be nice. So you ready to roll? Two rival barns. A year's worth of hard work. It's all come down to this. The top 10 McClay riders are finally announced. The final honors, 150 started. The eighth award today will go to Sloan Coles. In seventh place, it will be Maggie McAlary out of Amherst, New Hampshire. Maggie didn't win this year, but she still has a fabulous result. She climbed a total of 16 spots, all the way from 23rd after the first round, to seventh place overall. Brian and top contender Julie Wells are still in. They're considered the favorites to win, but suddenly there's a surprise. For all of them, folks, uh, we're going to go to fifth place next and congratulate Julie Wells out of West Simsbury, Connecticut, number 1218. Brian's rival Julie will not be a factor. Clearly. Her last round cost her dearly, but could someone else have passed Brian? So we've made it now to the soon. Three, it's down to gentlemen. three riders, and in third place, entry number twelve fifty-eight, Jessica Spicer. It's a great day for Heritage Farm. One of Andre's riders takes third place overall. That's that complete for our third. Place. And now only two riders remain: Brian and another top-ranked rider from Pennsylvania who was consistent all day. And then there were two, ladies and gentlemen. Eight will be the best for the year. This is the ASBCA McClay National Championship. Belong to Brian Gutal from New York. It's official. Brian has won the McClay medal and become the first rider in history to win all four junior equitation finals. For Frank, it's a career-defining moment and every trainer's dream. You made history. The triple crowner. <laughs> Relief. She seriously won all four. Like, all four. <laughs> when they announced my name as the winner of the McClay, um, I was so shocked and so excited, and my adrenaline was going at that point, and I just never thought it was going to happen. For me, this was the best year ever. And I don't think any other years to come are going to top it. Brian Gutal is now a household name in horse households around the country. I thought I had a shot. Her future looks bright, to say the least. Clearly, with the type of season Brian's had and all her talent, she's one of the sports superstars. Hopefully, she'll stick with it to be one of the country's top Olympic riders. For Beacon Hill, it's been an extraordinary year. I mean, you did it. Now we all did it. You don't get these moments too often. And it happened. It happened. While this year, the McClay champion wasn't from Heritage Farm, never count Andre Dignelli out. It's a wrap. There was a deserving champion, great rider, great horse. Uh, Heritage had another great day. We had 
top ribbons, Jessica, Addison, and Maggie. Any one of those can come back to me and win this event next year. Stay tuned. We'll be back next year and we'll do it. Seven horses and riders went for the biggest medal in junior riding. I'm glad the insanity of finals is finally over. And I'm excited for next year. I can't wait. I have to say it was a great experience. Last minute changes and all. Through triumphs and tears, they experienced it all. This season started off with a bang, you know, but in the end it all made me a better person, a better rider. This past season was just a test of waters, but next season, I want to win. I'm not really looking at this as the end, and I really hope to keep uh, riding for the rest of my life. This was the diary of their lives. I wonder what will happen next.